This is important, it's just that I've got to leave the convention to get to. Nah, mate, it won't take long. Well, is that all you got, had to ask me? Um, uh, well, yeah. What, what did you find out about the inside of Dino? Something like that? Dino? Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Well, we found out that the core of the planet was solid and was quite hot, over 100,000 degrees centigrade. Shit, man, that's fucking hot! I would really appreciate it if you didn't use that language in my automobile. Oh, shit, sorry, man, I just can't help it. Sometimes, you know, you know what I'm saying? No, not really. What? Oh, gosh, you made me take the wrong turn now. How the fuck did I make you take the wrong turn? You're the one who's driving this fucking shit car. I really don't care for the way you're talking to me. Look, just do the fucking interview so I can go down to pizza, all right? This is gonna look good I'm sorry, done. but I'm going to have to yeah. throw you out if you do continue con conversation in this manner. <coughs> How childish was that? Stop, for heaven's sake, man. You always get us both killed. <coughs> Seb, hmm? you're on. Oh, shit. Um, why? You haven't edited the screen yet. How am I supposed to see what I'm doing? Anything. Barry, get it sorted, mate. God, dear. Action! Wise words from NASA's head scientist there. Now that we know more about our ticking time bomb of a planet known as day night, there's still one question left unanswered. If this planet was destroyed over 3.5 billion years, how do scientists know so much about it? The answer orbits here. Recent probe analysis has shown NASA that these floating rocks are much more than floating rocks. Actually, told us is that sensory and inertial AO rocks forming a wall of gas. They are actually. <coughs> <coughs> oh, fuck all that. Uh, they're actually, uh, you put them together, they would form a planet three quarters the size of Saturn. <coughs> Can I go for my break now? Get the goddamn microphone out of my face! Go on! And you, get out of my face too! <laughs> so now, let's do exactly what he said, and put all those rock pieces together. You will see, they form a strikingly close coincidence to our lost planet, Danai. But how could a planet that size meet such a gruesome doom? Nuclear war? Martians? Harriet Jones MP fly down off? No, none of them. It was a more frightening enemy, Saturn. But how could a planet like Saturn annihilate another planet? It has no weapons, has no defence, has no army. But it does have one thing, one defence and attack mechanism, gravity. After a long time of orbiting each other, Saturn and Day Nine did the inevitable. No, they didn't fall in love and have children. In fact, they collided. They had orbited each other for so long that Saturn's gravity field was too powerful for Danai to resist. Day Nine was pulled actually physically inside Saturn, where the intense pressure and storms combined attacked the defenseless Day Nine until eventually. Saturn's rings were born. But for now, thank you for watching and bye bye.